Hello everybody, I'm Sean Spaulding and welcome back to part 2 of our beginner tutorial series. So we're already off to a good start, we've got our player object that we can move around with the arrow keys and it points, points himself towards the mouse cursor, but it's still not really very much of a game, it's not really very much to look at in general really. So what we're going to do in this part is we're going to create a bullet that our player object can shoot around and create some lovely fireworks. So the first thing I'm going to do, just like before when we made our player object and its sprite, is we're going to make a new sprite for our bullet. So I'm going to right click in sprites and hit create. It'll take us back to our workspace and open up the sprite editor. And I'm just going to call this one SPR underscore bullet. I'm going to click import and just bring in my bullet sprite. Click yes to that and you see it brings it in fine. And then I'm just going to place the origin somewhere around here in the center of this sprite. I'm not going to use the, uh, the drop down middle center anymore so we don't want the origin to be there. Um, I want kind of to mark the, the center point of this sprite as being around here inside the sort of main chunk of the bullet itself rather than sort of the the uh, the trailing uh, blaze coming from behind it. So I'm just going to click on the image just to place that origin about there. I could type it in precisely with uh, these coordinates if I want to but it's easy enough just to place it there. So that's that sprite. So now that we have a sprite for that bullet, you can guess what we might want to do next, and that's create a new object for the bullet. So I'm going to right click in objects and hit create, and that'll create a new object editor for us. I'm just going to link that where it says no sprite to uh, SPR underscore bullet. So we have the bullet attached to the sprite and call this OBJ underscore bullet, just in the exact same way that we settled the, um, the player object to begin with. Now we don't actually need to set up any uh, events or actions in here just yet. What we're going to do is come back uh, to our player object and we're going to set up the code in here to dynamically create instances of uh, OBJ bullet on the fly in the game. So whenever we click the mouse button we'll create a copy or an instance of this object in the game world. So the first thing we can do is we can actually get rid of this uh, this comment at the top here that says you can write your own code in this editor, we don't need that anymore. Um, but what we can do is actually just write a comment of our own um, just to label what each section of this code does now that we're uh, starting to add a bit more to it. Trust me, it's very easy to forget what certain areas of your code do and leaving comments in your code, very easy way to track that. You write in a comment, it doesn't actually do anything in your game, um, it just uh, it just serves as literally a comment or a note in your code. You do it by just typing two slashes and you can see the text turns green after that. And anything you write, you can write anything after that, anything you want, and it won't be run or interpreted by the game as an instruction. So I'm just going to write moving around there because that's what that chunk of code does. It controls us moving around and looking at the mouse. And then underneath that I'm going to create a new comment that just says shoot. Okay. And the code we put here is going to control our shooting. So what I want to do is check to see if the mouse button, um, the left mouse button is being pressed. And if it is, uh, create a copy of obj underscore bullet at the position of the mouse for now. We'll see what that does. So I'm going to use an if statement just as I did before. I'm going to type if and then open brackets just as I did before. And this time instead of keyboard check, I'm going to write mouse underscore check underscore button and open brackets and type mb underscore left. Okay, um, This condition here is doing exactly what I just said we're going to do. We're going to check to see if the left mouse button is currently being pressed. And if all that is true, then whatever we type uh, after this uh, line of code will happen. But sometimes when you write an if statement you want to do more than just one thing if, uh, if that statement is true. Um, we we only want to do one thing initially here, but we may want to do more later. So what I'm going to do is instead of simply writing the command immediately after the line, is I'm going to open a pair of uh, curly braces. And by doing this after the if statement, instead of carrying out whatever happens here, we're going to carry out whatever happens inside these curly brackets. Now it's also common practice when you do this um, to press tab once for every time you open up uh, a pair of these brackets. Um, so that whenever I type my code in here, we can see very clearly when reading the code that it's part of this if statement. If I type everything at the same indentation like this, it becomes harder to see where your if statements start and end, even though the brackets are there. And it just makes it a little bit more human readable to just uh, t press tab once and just sort of indent uh, the code that uh, happens inside your if statements. So what do we want to actually happen when we press the left mouse button? We want to create an instance of our bullet object in the game world. So what I'm going to write is instance underscore create 
underscore layer. And then as with most functions like this, you typically have to open and close a pair of brackets and usually have to supply some sort of instructions or arguments to that function to tell it what to do. And you'll see when you write a function like this, GameMaker actually shows you at the bottom here exactly what uh, arguments and values and information that particular function needs. So as you can see this one needs an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, a layer ID which we'll come to in a second, and uh, the name of the object that you want to create. So for the X and Y we're just going to use the coordinates of the mouse. So just separated by commas here I'm just going to type mouse underscore X comma mouse underscore Y and that will give us the X and Y coordinates of our mouse. Now the next value that we need to supply is the layer. Now all instances in a GameMaker game are arranged by layers, and this is an important change between GameMaker Studio 2 and Studio 1. The layer an instance is on determines the order in which it is drawn to the screen. Each layer is set to a certain depth. Layers with a higher depth are drawn first, and therefore appear behind objects on layers with lower depths. You can create and manage layers from the room editor, which we will come to in a bit. For now, I'm literally just going to write layer, which will take the layer our player is currently on, and we'll create the bullets on that particular layer. Um, after that, add another comma and just write obj underscore bullet. So that will create a bullet on the same layer as our player uh, at the x and y coordinates of our mouse. So now if I go ahead and run the game, you can see if I hold the left mouse button or if I just click the left mouse button, I can draw bullets all over the screen. See, we don't actually need to use a uh, use this function to create uh, bullets if we really wanted to. We could create a fancy art game out of this. It's quite fun just to sort of draw these bullets all around the place. So that's how we create instances dynamically in the game world. So first of all, let's adjust this so instead of just creating the bullets at the mouse coordinates, we create them at our player object because we're going to create them at the player and then cause them to shoot off by themselves, okay? So close the game now and just where we wrote mouse x and mouse y before, just simply shorten that to x and y, just as the same as we were referring to our player's x and y coordinates when we were moving around. So now what we're going to do is open up object bullet, I'll move our workspace down here, and add the create event this time. So differently from the step event which runs every single frame of the game, currently at 30 frames a second, um, the create event only happens once and that's just when the object is made for the first time. Let's get rid of that comment at the top and I'm just gonna write set up motion because what we're gonna do is basically set it up so our bullet just flies off into the distance the moment it's made first thing we want to do is get the direction for which we want to fire. Now the direction is going to be based on our player's position and the position of the mouse, okay? It's going to be the angle between the two. So we can get that just by typing direction equals point underscore direction. And we used this before, we just want to take two, uh, two coordinates, an x and a y position and another x and a y position, and work out the angle between them. So we're just going to use the x and y position of this bullet as it's just been made, so it'll be at where the player is, our x and y position, um, and the position of the mouse. So mouse underscore x and mouse underscore y, just as we've used before. Okay, But we don't want it to always be directly that angle. We want to sort of randomize it a little bit so it feels like we're sort of spraying the bullets a little rather than just shooting them directly at the mouse cursor just to add a little bit of game feel. So I'm just going to type direction equals direction plus random underscore range and then this generates a, a random value between two values that we give it. So I'm going to say minus four and four. So we're going to uh, add or subtract a value between minus 4 and 4 to our current direction just to make it a bit more randomized. Then we're just going to give our bullet some base velocity and speed to begin with. So I'm going to type speed equals um, 16. So there'll be 16 pixels per frame. It'll move in the direction we've just given it. And we're going to set our image angle, lastly, to be our direction. So the angle of the image adjusts to face the direction it's in, just as we've done with the player before. Now all we have to do is run the game. And we should find when we click the left mouse button that we shoot lots of lovely bullets everywhere. And now we create a nice sort of wheel fireworks display if I just sort of spin the mouse around like this. You can see it looks a little silly at the moment because our bullets are creating on the same layer as our 
player object, and so they're, they're appearing like on top of our player like that. Because the game isn't really receiving any instruction about how to order those, so it's just creating new ones and drawing them higher than uh, whatever was drawn before. Okay, in order to fix that, we need to create a new layer for our bullets and uh, create the bullets on that layer instead, so that they appear below our player as opposed to above. So let's fix that one now. Let's close this and go to our room editor, and we can see over here on the left our uh, layers at the moment. We have instances and background. The background's a background layer just designed specifically for uh, sprites in the background and not object instances. And you can also create more background layers, but we're interested in our instances layers at the moment. We have one by default that's just called instances, and that's where uh, our player object currently sits. The in well, the instance of our player object currently sits in the game world. And uh, what we want to do is create a new layer. So I'm going to click here, create new instance layer. And you see it's called instances one. I'm just going to rename it to uh, bullets layer. Okay, press enter. And I'm going to drag it underneath instances um, so that uh, the bullets, when we create them, will appear below this layer. So anything we create on bullets layer will appear below instances. Because you can see if you look at depth at the bottom here, bullets layer is set to a depth of 100, whereas instances is set to 0. If we rearrange them like this, it intuitively makes it so that bullets layer is now 0, and instances would be 100. The higher the depth, the, the deeper into the screen the things will be drawn. They'll be drawn before anything else, so they'll be drawn um, behind other instances. Okay. So we want the depth of our bullets layer to be higher than that of our instances, so we drag that underneath. So our bullets layer has the higher depth, depth of 100, and instances has a depth of 0. Now all we have to do is change the layer that our bullets are being created on. So if we go back to our object editor for RubyG underscore player, where we created the bullets in the first place, instead of just creating them on our current layer, let's type in the name of the layer we just made, which is bullets layer. And I've wrapped that in quotation marks because we have to pass uh, the name of the layer in as a string. You can't just type bullets layer, you have to type it in in quotation marks as a string for layers. That's just how layers operate at the moment. So if I run the game now, you find when you're shooting the bullets, they all appear below the player now instead of just on top of them because they're being assigned to that layer which has a higher depth than the layer our player is currently sitting on. The last thing we're going to cover in this particular part of the tutorial series is how to make those bullets um, not shoot in a continuous uh, stream one every single frame. We're just going to slow it down a bit. They'll still fire constantly when you hold the mouse button, but they won't just fire one every single frame like that. We'll sort of create some space in between so that they uh, fire sort of a bit more reasonably. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new event in uh, our player object. By clicking add event, we're going to create the create event similar to object bullet um, and this line of uh, any code we put in here is going to run when the instance of the player object is made for the very first time okay so it's only going to happen once what we're going to do is we're just going to write cooldown equals zero what that means is we're basically creating what's called a variable okay so we're just assigning the word cooldown to equal zero so now whenever we refer to cooldown in our code we're basically referring to the number zero, and we can change the number that this holds and do any number of things with it. Variables very useful and very powerful, as we'll soon find out. Now, if I come back to the step event, in here at the moment, we're checking to see if the mouse button is held down every single frame of the game in the step event. And if it is, we're just going ahead and creating uh, a bullet. But what we're going to do is create basically a small cooldown period. That's what that variable is going to be used for. So instead of just checking if the mouse is held down, we're also going to check to see if cooldown currently equals zero. In fact, we're actually going to check to see if it's less than one uh, rather than zero. The reason for that will become clear in a second. So I'm going to type two ampersand symbols, uh, which basically represents and. So if mouse check button MB left and the following condition are true, then do this stuff rather than just checking one condition. We have to open another pair of brackets for this condition. I'm going to write uh, cooldown less than one. Okay, so we're going to check to see if that variable that we just made, which is zero at the moment, if it's less than one, which it currently is, um, because that's what we've established it as, as zero, zero is less than one, then uh, create our bullet object. Okay, what I'm then going to do is set that cooldown to equal three after we've fired the bullet. 
attacker, and after that's happened, we'll no longer be able to shoot. So at the moment, if we were to run the game, we'd be able to fire one bullet, because our cooldown is less than one, but then cooldown will be set to three, which is greater than one, and uh, we wouldn't be able to shoot bullets anymore, because this would always return false. All right. Now, in order to fix that, what we're going to do is, outside of this code, write cooldown equals cooldown minus one. So any frame where you know we're not shooting a bullet and setting it back to three, uh, the cooldown will slowly tick down by one every single frame until it is eventually less than one again. Okay, and this is why we check less than one rather than equal zero because we could go into minus numbers quite easily here. We're going to about minus a thousand or so because we've not fired in ages. But the way we want to check is that it's less than one. And if it is, fire a bullet, set that cooldown back to three, and then continue to slowly tick the cooldown down. So if I run the game now, and if I hold the left mouse button, you can see we fire, but at a slightly slower pace. You know, still firing quite a lot. If I increase the value um, that we set cooldown to, which I can demonstrate now, if I set this to say uh, ten and ran the game, it would mean we basically need to wait ten frames between each bullet, so you can see it's firing much, much slower now. Okay, so that's how you create simple projectiles. Now that we have a game where we have a player object and that player can shoot some bullets, uh, the next part in the series is going to look at creating enemies for us to actually shoot at. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far, and I'll catch you guys next time.